Okay, you guys, so it's later on in the same day. I've changed into my night clothes. I've gone to my uh, philosophy club, so I'm back now. And so the first step that I did was, like I like you just saw, was the base coat. Um, the base coat is important for me, at least, because it allows you to do the next step, which is veins and blue shading. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, so for my vein color, I have a mixture of the Bountiful Baby's vein color, their premixed color, with a little bit of ultramarine blue. So for ethnic babies you're going to want that color to be water color consistency but you want to use a little bit darker color of veins so this is the color that i get so you're going to actually go over your veins a couple of times for them to actually show up right now i'm i'm taking my brush that i made myself by plucking out all the let me see if it'll focus it's not going to focus well, see, okay, I'm trying to get it to focus on the brush. So basically what I did was I took another brush and I uh, trimmed away a lot of the hairs on the brush so I get like a liner, a liner uh, consist, uh, thin liner type brush left. So just a few hairs left of the original brush. I did that because the liners I was finding in my store weren't thin enough for me. So this is the brush that I use for veins and also um, for creases. So I'm right now I'm checking the consistency of my vein color. And I think I'm going to add a little bit more ultramarine blue in there. Just the itsy bitsy tiny bit so I can get a little bit of a deeper color. So I'm just going to take just the tiniest little tip of blue and add that into my mixture. And this is also in um, Mona Lisa Thinner. I bought these jars off of Amazon. Uh, it was a 12 pack, I believe for $7. And it was probably the best purchase I made because it keeps all my mixes without drying up. Um, so I can just keep reusing the same mixtures. Very, very helpful if you're painting more than one doll at a time or you want the same color like a uh, skin tone so always keep makes making sure your color is thoroughly mixed because the color the paint color will settle at the bottom if you don't keep mixing it up and you'll get a very inconsistent color so I'm checking the consistency again and I like this color much better. So, I'm going to keep saying so, but, so, I don't know if I already said it, but this is, it, it gives the, the base coat gives a very, like, matte surface, and it helps really capture the veins how I like. Sorry, there was a little bit of a hair. Move that off there. So, veins are like... The way to think about veins is if you are thinking about how a river flows. You don't want them straight. You don't want them just like an X on the forehead. You want them to squiggle. So you want to hold your wrist really like loose. And you're just going to flow. So for me, I do forehead veins. So I'm just going to wiggle and flow. So you can see kind of where it's wet. That's one vein. And then I'm going to flow off of that one back into the crown. Like I said, you're not going to see the veins the first round that well. So you're going to have to keep going over that spot. And if you need to, you can thicken your color up a little bit. So you can see that where that vein with the lighting would stop. Um, you can see where that vein kind of flows back. So that's one vein. And you can continue to branch off of that one vein. Or you could go over to the side of the head and do another vein. And just flow. You don't want to do really any straight lines. 
because even though your veins may look like straight lines, they're really not. So just keep flowing. And you'll get used to kind of like the flow of veins. So I just did a couple. They look kind of thick, but that's not. It's just the thinner. The actual color pigment is not thick. The way that the thinner goes, it kind of spreads, but the color stays where your, uh, where your brush goes. So I like to do a lot of head veins, even though ultimately some of the veins you will not be able to see because of all the color, all the skin layers and all the mottling layers that you're going to put on top. It's just a nice touch to have. So I'm going to do some more on the back. Really flow those veins. So I don't do too many on the head because otherwise it kind of looks kind of weird. You don't want it too veiny unless that's what you like. So I'm going to continue to go over the veins on the head and then I'll show you. And I'll show you some veins on the arms and the legs. It's very complicated on the arms and legs. I do a lot of veining on the arms and legs. Okay, so I finished the veins on the head for the, at least the first layer. I don't know if I'll do another layer or not. Um, with ethnic babies, you do want to make your veins a little darker. Like I said earlier, it takes a lot of layers of skin tone and mottling to build up over top of the veins. So even if you do them a little darker, they should end up looking still like they're under the skin which is what you want to go with. So, the veining on the arms and legs, like I said, I, uh, I used to not do as much veining, but now I do quite a bit of veining. I feel like it leads to a more realistic look. So usually I'll start at the like top of the shoulder, and I'll just like start with a vein that looks like this. Like a little river that goes down and then another one connecting to it. Kind of like that. You can see just two, like a V, and then from there I'll brown, branch off, kind of like a spider web, and just go all around the arm. It's very um, kind of intuitive. You, you're, you will realize kind of how your veins will be flowing as you make more veins branching off. Just like a spider web, you're just, uh, or like a tree, I guess you could say. You're just branching off all around the arm. All around, you're gonna wrap all the veins all around the arm. Because if you look at your arm, your vein isn't just in one place. It might be more visible in um, one spot or another but I feel like this leads to a more lifelike appearance. Even if you can't see all of the veins, it'll look more realistic when there's some just poking out. So I'll do that all over the arm and I'll come back. So I wrap the veins all around. You can't really see them that well on camera, but I've wrapped them all around his arm. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna flow those veins into the hands. So on top of the hands is important because if you look at your hand, you can definitely see some veins on the top of your hand. So you don't want to just stop your veins at the wrist. You're going to want to actually flow them from the big vein on the arm into the fingers. And it changes where they go based on your hand position. So I'm just going to do a couple little flowy lines and to the fingers on the top of the hand. I'm not going to do it for the thumb. And then on the other side of the hand, towards the, uh, the palm, you're going to flow the big major vein from the inner wrist into your palm. You have lots of veins in your palm. So you're going to wrap that in there and just kind of flow with it. Wrap it in there. Adds a very nice dimensional 
look when you have some blue veins going to and then some little V's on the fatty part of the hand right here on the palm. So like just a little couple lines right there. So now he has the veins flowing into his palm. And I'm going to do a very similar thing on his other hand, even though it's a fist. I'm still going to flow some veins into this fatty part right here. And do similar veining on the other arm. So I won't film that. It's the same thing. Just keep flowing those veins throughout the arm to create a more dimensional look. Oh, also, if you want to get even fancier with your veins, what I do is I actually flow the veins from the palm into the open fingers. So I'll put veins, if you can see, up the fingers, up the fingers. Adds again another little quality, a little extra something. So I'll paint, I already did it on this hand, but I painted up the middle of this finger, up the middle of that finger, and so forth. Not on the thumb, because it's obviously not open. So, that's another thing I do. So, I am done with the second arm, which is the closed fist. Same thing with this arm, I did all over veins, and then I did a vein flowing from the inner wrist into the fist. So, once you're all done with the doll, when it's all complete, you'll only see about 10-15% to 15 of the veins, and that is the ideal ratio for me. That way, the veins are still there, but like a real person, you have to look much closer to see all the intri intricacies of the veins on the dolls. So uh, if you have one of my dolls, you might not think they really have veins at first, but if you look closer, you'll see all the little veins underneath the skin tone. And that's how I like to paint them. I think it's very subtle and very beautiful to see all the little veins. So I'm going to move on to the legs. So the legs are very similar to the arms. So I won't show you throughout the leg because it's very similar th throughout the arm. What I will show you is how I do the feet. Um, it's different. So I'll sh I will show you that after I do throughout the leg. So now I have done the veining throughout the leg. And you guys do not feel obligated. To, if you are nervous about veins, do not feel obligated to do them, let alone do as many as I do. I just like the effect that it gives. You don't necessarily have to do veins and to get a beautiful looking doll. Um, so if you're nervous about it, I wouldn't press yourself to do it, especially if it's your first doll. I would get a practice to, uh, limb and try out veins so you get the right consistency, the right look that you look want to um, get for your veins. So if you're nervous, don't worry. You know you can always practice on, like I said, a test limb. So, for the foot veins, I continue one of the main veins, and I go down the foot, over, into the toe. So it creates like, let's see if I can angle it so you can actually see, kind of the lighting will let you. So you can kind of see, just a little bit, where I flowed from one of the major veins, down over, onto one of the toes. And I'll do that similarly on the other foot, on the other leg. And then for the bottom of the foot, I'm taking this side vein that I already painted. Let's see if I can really get some light on that. I'm taking this side vein. It's hard to show on camera, but it, I can see it in person. Mix up my paints, make sure I get some more vein color and I'm going to just flow that into the bottom of the foot because you have lots of veins visible on the bottom of your foot so it cre it goes up and around up and around and then take another one similarly do up and around now I don't do the same veins for every single doll because I think it would get like repetitive and kind of not interesting. So I just select what I'm going to do per doll. 
and just flow with the kit's natural positioning. So you can see there's some veins at the bottom of his foot. And if his toes were, un, uh, if they were flexed, I would do the same thing I did on the fingers that were open. I would continue the vein into the toes if they were open. I don't know if they're open on the other foot. It doesn't look like it, so you won't get to see me do that. But it's very analogous to what I did on the fingers that were open. I just continued the veins into those fingers. So that's the bottom of the foot. You can do more veins on the side. More little tiny veins on the sides where the um, arch of the foot is that flow into the big veins on the bottom of the foot. Really play with it. Like I said, if you do them um, light enough, you won't see much of them anyway. So you can see where it's wet. That's where all the veins are. So now that I have all the limbs and the head veined to my heart's content, I do another step, which is called blue shading. Um, this is another thing that is quite optional. It's if you're comfortable with your ability to do so, go ahead and do what I'm going to do. If not, like I said, it's optional. I do it. I like to do it. I think it adds another, again, another little detail. So blue shading is basically how on your face, especially, I only do it on the face. I feel like with all the veins that I do on the arms and legs, it's kind of unnecessary to do it there. So on the face... You have spots where your skin is thinner, naturally thinner, and that will be in the corners of the eye and over the bridge of the nose, alongside the nostrils, under the chin, right here, and then like under this lip where it dips in. And then I'll do some additional little tiny veins in blue in the ear. And that's pretty much all I do for my um, blue shading. I think some people do the temple areas as well. So this is the temple right here, right above the eyebrow where the vinyl naturally kind of dips in. That little triangular right there, that is where the temple is. Some people do blue shading there. I do not. I find it a little just unnecessary for me. So I'll come back and show you where I've shaded, where I just mentioned. So if you look closely, you can see where I said I put some blue shading in the corner of our eyes, drag that across the bridge of the nose into the other corner of the eye. See the focus? Into the other corner of the eye. I put some around the outside of his nostrils. I also added some on the corner of his mouth just for added a little extra on the bottom of his chin crease and on the bottom of his lip crease. And then I did a little couple of veins inside the ear canal, just a little squiggly ones coming from inside the ear. Same thing on the other ear. Just a couple, you can't really tell from the ear. So, and if your baby has a um, neck crease on the back, I would also do a little blue shading on the back of there as well. He doesn't really have a neck crease. It's just kind of little, little tiny dent, which I did hit a little bit, but usually it'll have more of a indenture back there. He doesn't have really much of one, so I just did a little streak across. So that concludes this video. I'll continue to mess around with the veins as you see what I'm doing now is I'm continuing to go over some of the veins. So that concludes this portion of the video, the first few steps that I do. Tomorrow I'll come back and I'll do all the modeling layers that I do and then we'll do probably the first one or two skin tones depending on how much I can get done tomorrow. But I hope you guys are will enjoy this series Again, I am no, by no means a professional. I am very much still a beginner artist. I've just had a couple people ask, well, more than a couple. I have had a, quite a few people ask me 
how I go about my dolls because although I am, I still really think of myself as a beginner artist. My work apparently is quite good for me being a beginner artist. That's just what I've been told. So um, I hope you guys enjoy this series. Um, I'm going to do my best to explain all what I do, all the steps. See you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye.